Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to our monthly edition of RPV City Talk. And it's always great to have our Mayor from RPV, Susan Brooks, in studio to give us your update. Hi Liz, How's great to going? be here. How's it going? Yeah. It's going great. We love having you here. You it's really, almost done. <laughs> no, don't say that. We still need you. But oh. you're saying as far as being mayor, can be you mayor. believe here yes. we are it's November? It's, it's been a great year, and we've had a big celebratory year. So yeah, lots. we can deal with that later. But, um, yeah, we have a lot still going on right now. Good. Well, we always ask you to come here and just bring our residents up to speed on just issues that are coming before the city council. You had a meeting last night and um, discussed all kinds of issues. We'll start with one of the bigger topics, which was your MOU Memorandum of Understanding with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District. Explain what was going on with the school district and the issue there. Well, the school district, uh, back in 2011, the city decided that it, um, well, the city was going to make a uh, contribution, but but in order to avoid a gift of public funds, using Quimby funds, which have to be used specifically for parks and recreational activities, um, we were able to help the Ailing um, School with, with its new pool. And so, but as one of the conditions, Rancho Palos Verdes residents needed to have access to the pool at certain times. So it took a couple of years to work this out with the attorneys. But as of now, um, going before the school board finally, we have uh, agreed that um, for the residents to be able to use it Saturday and Sundays from 3 to 6 p.m. Peninsula High School. At Peninsula High School. And then also the option for the gymnasium at uh, Merrill Est um, to be used on Tuesday evenings as a like basketball night, open basketball night. The, also, the other caveat is that every year this could be revisited so that we could look at what the needs are in the community. I mean, after all, you know, the schools are the one thing that binds us all on the peninsula. And uh, all the schools are actually parks. And you know, I don't know how many people really know that. But when they have these various facilities inside, now we're able to actually utilize these as a community. So it's a really a great win-win for both the school district and the city. And it was a, quite a contribution. It was $80,000 from big, RPV. a big, amount of money. For that Peninsula High School pool. Right. So it looks like as they're working, you're going to now figure out, I think staff, will, you'll figure out what are the needs, like what does the community want using that Peninsula right. High School pool on the weekends? So is it going to be for kids? So it'll be, a, it, it'll be an experimental basis right now. So we'll have that opportunity to find out. Right, so it'll be some pool time then at Peninsula, and then you're saying gymnasium time over at the Merrill S. Gym. Right. And I know there were some questions, well, what about also using the pool at Merrill S., but that's not even on the table at this point. Well, I, I think the pool at Merrill S. Um, is having its own share of problems right now. Right. So uh, yeah, I don't want to go there. Spread the resources. <laughs> it's enough. <though. laughs> it's enough right now right. because we have huge liabilities of our own and huge things to undertake as a city with our own right. infrastructure and public safety needs. So. so I know it's been a few years in the work. Any timeline when the community might be finding out with a flyer? Hey, listen, you guys I, well, can sign I, they're up. They're going for... to bring this next week oh, okay. to the uh, school board, so it should be open. It should be available shortly, I would think, after the holidays. Well, that would be terrific if residents could go over and use the Peninsula Pool yes, on the weekends. It's right. a beautiful pool. It is. And, it is. Um, I was there. One, it's a great pool cover, too. Okay. So that's good that that was resolved. Um, also, moving on, that we had the issue coming up with the, um, the Planning Commission. Uh, you have changes regarding oh, the yes. term of office if you end up being on the Planning Commission. What were the changes that were made and why? Well, they were just trying to bring the code and compliance um, back. Actually, when I was on the council 20 years ago, we brought it down to two years um, from four years. And then back in 2003, the councils brought it to four years, but it, it wasn't consistent in terms of the, count, the city clerk identifying um, the op when the openings would be. So largely it was uh, ministerial, but uh, I guess to the other extent, um, what we did do was we did impose term limits. Um, the majority of the council, with, count, with um, Councilman Knight abstaining on that issue, but um, we did um, of two terms, two four-year terms. So, right. 
Uh, and the idea is two consecutive four-year terms, as it is with the city council. That's not to preclude um, a, a, a planning commissioner from maybe wanting to come back after a two-year hiatus. But we have so many people in this community that want to help out, that are so highly skilled. People are retiring and they want to participate. That, you know, for us to, you know, to just, and yet, I mean, this is a double-edged sword in a way, because yet we have some outstanding people that bring a wealth of experience when they do have that experience on the Planning Commission. So, you know, we've opted to try this out. If it doesn't work, each council has an option to make those changes right. as deemed necessary. I think it is true. When it comes to term limits, there's that catch-22. When you get something that's so incredible serving the community and they, they do a great job, why not keep them? Um, but at the same time, you want to, like, give other people opportunities. It's, it's a tough one. And it you feel like the one. voters are educated enough to decide, well, this person isn't doing a great job, so it's time for them to go, but it doesn't work that way. Well, no, the other thing <laughs> is, is the council has the right to do that at any time to decide, um, you know, to make a change. We have to be able to know that we're a mature council at this point mm -hmm. and that we can do that. We have that individual right and responsibility without hearing any acrimony from you know, the peanut stands. And of course, the city council itself, the term limits were imposed now, I don't know how many years back, but it's two councils ago at least that the Right, it was when Larry Clark was um, was on the council, I know that. Right. Um, so I think he brought forth, brought that forth. And so the councils are two, two four-year term maximums. Right. And I think that works well. Actually, I think that's a, that yeah. is a good idea. Um, because there are but I also believe that um, the Planning Commission is a natural stepping stone to City Council mm -hmm. because there is such a wealth of information to know and to understand about how municipal government works. So that we've, that's why we've kind of had a little bit of initial bumpy road here with, with um, I mean, the only persons who actually have um, Planning Commission experience are Jim Knight and myself. And that's not to say that, you know, we, we're the be-all and the end-all. It's just to say that we understand the municipal pro process right. a little bit. It's, it's to walk more. before you run. Yeah. Well, and, um, of course, we just had the election. Um, yes, we city did. City election. And, and uh, our incumbents uh, were re-elected. Brian Campbell and Anthony Mizzetich are back for their last term. Yes, and, you know, and their last term. So mm -hmm. that will be in four years from now. There will be two. So you'll be working with the same seats. council. So there's an, also an advantage to that when you're yes. familiar with each other right. and right. Can, can move it forward. And Ken Dida, um, you know, made a <clears throat> um, respectable showing. So I would, I would congratulate him for running, right. because I guess his belief was that he just didn't think that you know it, it should be a pass through, but it did actually cost the city uh, about two hundred thousand dollars. I'm told to have the election. But it did also bring to the issue to the surface issues that um, are on people's minds. Um, so, right, just yes. depends on how you look at that. They were, I think, three candidate forums that we televised um, here on Channel Thirty Three, and when you listen to um, the former Mayor Kendida and the incumbents, you know, they sort of all talked about a lot of the same things. Mm -hmm. I think, in terms of just wanting to move forward with this transparency issues and things like that, things that they think are important to the residents keep moving it forward, right? Right. So anyway, but you, on the other hand, you mentioned with Planning Commission spreading the wealth, the fact that there was really only uh, the Kendida that jumped into the race, it was it would have been nice to see more people that want to run for office, It would have been really office, good, right? I think. <laughs> if there was going to be a real, uh, I mean, election that was going to be a uh, uh, contested election for it to be, for there to be more individuals involved. But, because um, when you ran, there was a big group, right? Yeah. Right. There were six or seven, I believe it was mm -hmm. seven. So yes, but there were um, there were open seats, so right. there were you know, three open seats. Right. So that was very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, moving back on to last night's council meeting, um, other things that came up. Uh, you adopted new state building fire codes. Is that something routine or comes up? Every three years, okay. every three years, we have to come into conformance with the fire codes. And so Paul, Paul Christman had a whole line of books, uh, large volumes of binders there for us to understand that as part of the code, we needed to address that. But we also addressed two other issues that were, I think, very important. One is um, something that came actually to me as a councilwoman, as a mayor um, with the Pacifica Homeowners Association. Um, and some of the, my fellow council members were in attendance for that meeting at Hess Park. Um, 
one of the um, participants in the community asked about the safety valves, emergency cutoff valves for earthquakes that are on your gas line, that you have put on your gas line. And they cost a couple hundred bucks. Um, but, you know, the permits to get them were $131 to $140. And so the question came up, if you had particularly, I mean, this is a safety issue, and we're trying to encourage this, um, would, there should be an incentive here. So they did come back, actually, staff did come back um, with a 75% um, reduction. I mean, we're looking at about $30 now for the permit so that somebody could come out just to make sure that it was installed properly. Um, but I will tell you that those, those little firefighter objects are very, very, um, they come in handy, they, they give you a real sense of security, and they help your neighbor next door. And if you get a group of you in the neighborhood that do it together, that's always good too because you, you, you have a nice group that's going to get a discount regardless. So there's a 75% subsidy to yes, the, 75 the cost of that permit. As a result of that. But yes. I would think most people and wouldn't know you need a permit to do that in the first place. No. no. Right? Most people wouldn't know that you need a and permit. And for viewers to do watching, that. when you want to make improvements and do things, you can go right to the city website, right? And it lists. Well, and that's why actually for the no item that came on right after that, which was um, walls, uh, freestanding walls, it became part of the code that from six feet to seven feet, so they can go that extra foot higher. But we're going to have the language reworked. It's coming back, this, this is coming back to us for rewarding so that we can look at, um, to make sure that it does not obstruct anybody's view. Because you, to just look at the code and say you can go from six to seven feet, without realizing that, yes, we also have a view ordinance, and you know we also have restrictions on fences, walls, and hedges with regard to uh, views that um, we just have to have language in there that points out they need to go and refer to right. the other. Because I, I was watching the council meeting and I have to admit at one point I all of a sudden was confused because I thought okay if you have a fence that's going to be up to seven feet I didn't think you needed a permit but now you're saying of course if it's going to affect view that's different. So the language that would come back, Liz, would come back to clarify that you would have to first check to see whether or not what you have there is going to be applicable so that you can bring that to seven feet. Is like if you're a lateral side to side neighbor and there's no view potential whatsoever, it's obvious you could do that. But if there's any view potential obstruction, then you will have to obtain a permit to, to well, if there's any potential view obstruction, you, you can't take that extra foot. All right. So all this was coming up under the um, agenda item of, of adopting new building code state. Right, right. right. So and so, and I, I think that the the really cool one is the, uh, you know, the gas shutoff valve. And the other thing is that uh, council in discussion last night, dis um, we looked at the option of, and we're going to bring it back um, with the sale of homes. That, um, that to make this a requirement with the sale of homes, that all of these have these gas shutoff valves. Right. So homes are selling now. Um, so we're going to have some new things that uh, I'm going to be bringing to the council too again. Uh, got a lot of new future agenda items. I know I saw that because also regarding the terms of selling home, you referenced about having trees in compliance and right. all of that so right. that when someone's about to buy a house, everything is sort of up to code. Right, because when you go to make any kind of correction or when you go to add an addition or add something not even tremendously significant, um, you need to bring your home to compliance, which means if you have trees that are blocking other people's views. I mean, people who purchased these homes originally did not necessarily have any of these view obstructions. And so the idea is not to denude the peninsula, but rent the city certainly, but to make sure that we can be mindful of the beauty of trees and the opportunity to lace trees, adopt trees, and in, in some cases remove trees, but mm -hmm. um, to be respectful of our neighbors. But you referenced that home sales are up. That they are, and that. home sales are up. People are paying cash. It's your time. <laughs> RPV is the place to be. Yes. Um, what moving paradise? On, it is paradise. I love that you say that. How about an update on San Ramon, which is like the oh biggest gosh. project in the city? Yeah. So I have to have my little cheat sheet here because so many things are happening in San Ramon. Um, you know, so this summer while you were gone, I was able to take a crew. You know, we were able to uh, Andy, Wingy, and Mark, and Mayor we, on the scene. Uh, well, yeah, and we went down to the 
to the pipes and saw what was going on at the bluff. And they're making so much progress now. Some of the staff members went in this week, and, and one of our councilmen, Jim Knight, um, and I plan to go in, but right now it's like pretty perilous getting in there. But uh, there are three stages that are taking place right now. So, like, number one would be if you start at the top of San Ramon Canyon, at the top of the switchbacks near Marymount. So from San Ramon Canyon, actually, to 25th Street, there is a pipe there. It's called a rib and lay, and it kind of look like looks like a wine barrel, mm -hmm. and that's the big 80-inch it would be a sleeve, but um, because the actual pipe that's going to go into it, the um, northwest pipe is actually, the, the steel pipe, is going to um, go inside that, and that's 54 inches. So you have the ribbon the lay sleeve, and then from the bluff to 25th Street, um, from 25th Street, I should say, to the bluff top okay. over there. It's flat. It's next to the mobile home park. That's um, That's got uh, what's called cut and cover because there's no perilous anything that has to go under. I mean, clearly going under the switchbacks is a major, but it's also a stabil it's a stabilizing force. Mm -hmm. So they're doing borings. I want to make that clear because I've, I've been asked this question and I've been asking these questions of staff and and the contractors, and they are doing constant borings. They are working, they are sh constantly um, working to shore up anything. And um, this object, this um, rib and lay um, pipe itself is a stabilizing force. That will be, you know, deep underneath the switchbacks. So then when you get from the bluff top to the beach, actually down to the beach, that's called the steel sleeve, and that's where they have to. That's where we started right. at the 54-inch drain pipe. So at the very end, when it's all done, they're gonna. Right now, they're starting. Actually, they're working on both ends at the same time right now. And I know some of the community constituents that were interested in a different kind of project um, wanted to do that, and that is actually being done. So they're halfway done with the per portion up the switchbacks. They're about 90% done with the portion from the bluff to 25th Street. And at the same time right now, they're, they're working on the concrete um, at the very end, at the bluff top. They're putting in these slope anchors, and there are about 20 of them. And there will be a concrete wall there, and then there will be a two-layered concrete wall. The first one is a retaining wall with rebars. It's four inches thick. And the second one is a concrete wall that's going to have this curved facade, and it will be 12 inches thick. And it will, after the concrete cures, it's going to be stained to look like a natural part of the bluff top. I mean, how cool is that? You could be working on the job right now. I mean, down. I'm so into this project, but it's you know, it's, it's huge. great. It's, it's million the million largest project. infrastructure project in the history of the city. It's I mean, just think about this. If they had done that over at Paseo del Mar, they might not have had this problem. So, right. That's you know, we're, we're staving off a catastrophe. Since you mentioned Paseo del Mar, maybe that would be a time to segue into our border issues with San Pedro. Oh, yeah. Got to wait and see what's going on. Right. And Anthony Mizzetich, Councilman Mizzetich, is on that committee as a liaison with right. the City of L.A., which is wonderful. Of course, for people watching, that means what's happening down there at Paseo del Mar area of San Pedro. Right, right. Where that's just um, yeah, very you can't precarious. get through. No, I used to live down in that neighborhood before oh, I came sad. to RPV. White's I Point is that, right down there. Living down there, but we have Ponta Vista. So and that's the border the, issue. That's the Ponta huge. Vista project is, um, you know, it came about. It, first of all, it's in the city of Los Angeles, so technically we don't really have a say, but. Because we have a wonderful councilman in Joe Buscaino, and we have some really great constituents in Rancho Palos Verdes that are very active, um, we're able to um, participate um, both in the planning process we, we've, we've been involved as well as the development process. They started out with uh, about over 2,000 units in this area, which is where the old Navy housing is. Which is PV um, Drive Northwestern. PV Drive North all the way up to where the PV Drive North and Western um, past Green Hills across the other side of the street all the way up to where the Albertson Shopping Center is. Right. So that's quite a distance. It, and I mean to put 2,000 you know units of anything in that location was really going to be difficult not just on 
um, the environment, but traffic. Right, you um, might as well make it a walk street. You would never drive down it. No, I'm just like, it would have well, been crazy. Well, talk about high density housing. Yeah, it would be like there. living in a P.O. box. But, um, but actually, so they've come down and down and down, and now they're at between 676 to 700. They've removed, um, uh, Councilman, um, Mayor Pro Tem Dehovic and I met for a very long period of time, a uh, week and a half ago with them. Uh, at Ponte Vista, and then the very next day I met with um, Jean Lacombe and them. Jean is the president of the Rolling Hills Riviera Homeowners Association, which represents 750 homes. So that's the largest in the city, actually, Homeowners wow. Association. A lot of people don't know that. And that's right there by and, Western. And it's right there, and a lot of that is zoned R1, um, but the fact is that, you know, the Planning Commission would be ready to go with that um, the way it is, um, even more than where it was. So it's not going to be R1. But the fact that they're removing the apartments, they're adding a park, they're taking a walkway to Mary Star, they have these flats that new people, uh, singles can move into and own as well as seniors. And they can take an elevator. All of the parking is hidden, is either subterranean or garaged. Everything is um, I, I think so you're a lot like more a pleased with the project that's I shaping am. up. I am, and I think most well, people good. who actually see it are. But um, there's no doubt that there, there, you know, regardless, more traffic is more traffic. So, right. But there are mitigation measures, and right now we're working with the city of L.A. to get some of the beautification in the medians so that they can fall in line with our Western Avenue vision plan. And at first they weren't even listening to it, and now they are. So, you know, there's also an unsightly wall over there uh, next to Green Hills, and uh, they may be able to participate with helping to mitigate that. But that planning commission meeting is going to take place November 12th at 8.30 okay. in the morning. And that's downtown? Downtown. Okay. Right. Well, and so you do expect people will go from RPV as well? We'll have the homeowners group will go down there and... Uh, yeah. You know. People may. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the status is going to be there. I was, I was glad we were able to bring it back locally this first time. But um, right now, um, I know Councilman Buscaino is extremely involved in wanting to know how the people in Rancho Palos Verdes feel. All right. Well, thanks for being on that one and updating us. Um, you were mentioning earlier future agendized items. Anything you want to reference? Oh, my gosh. I have like five of them. I don't know how but, much um, but one was the view ordinance, um, bringing those trees into compliance, and I'm going to be working with that. And another has to do with um, policies, um, various issues. You know, there are so ma there are about five issues coming up, so right. I don't know that we'll have that time. Well, because we only have a few minutes left, and I always love to hear when you give your old reports, because I don't know how you fit everything in in 24 hours, because as mayor, you are doing wearing a million hats and going to a million um, committees and this and that. So share with us some of the highlights of things you've done in the last month. Yes, I would just say that, like, the last month um, we, we had the Duck Pond Party, which was the Vanderlip's 100th anniversary. This is the book, everybody. It's on today's uh, front page of the PV News. Vicki Mack put this together. It's, she did an excellent job. And it reads like somebody's talking to you. This man was a farmer. And this man became the head of the largest bank in the country, and he just happened to buy the entire, the peninsula. entire peninsula from the um, Bixby uh, Ranch people right. and a uh, hundred years ago. So this that party was uh, very I saw lovely. You there. We were there together. It was and nice, it was low key, and lovely. We had three great celebrations this year: um, the 40th of the city, the 25th of the Land Conservancy, and the 100th of this. Right. And then also, um, actually, at that um, Bob. Douglas, who is our resident expert geologist of the Portuguese Bend landslide, um, gave me this uh, initial spiral bound book portion of what is going to be a hard bound book. And it is called The Creepy Slow Moving Landslides of the Portuguese Bend Area. Right. And uh, this will help us tremendously uh, as we go forward um, paying serious attention to a. Um, that darn a fix, bumpy road, fixing a that fix, bumpy road. Not just a constant band-aids right and of course you're doing your monthly coffees yes and that next one will be the third thursday which will take place um i believe that would be on the 21st of november okay. so we'll be there and are, those coffees are great people love to come to them so well, you get a lot of encouraged. ideas and you it's hear from the residents starbucks golden cove 10 a.m no later than noon ending okay well, uh, we, we'll we get have you. a lot going on. You do. And I look forward to uh, getting you back in here next month in December. 
um, as you are uh, still serving as mayor at the beginning of December, and we'll talk holidays because uh, I know that that's an exciting time for all of us, and I want it you to is. share some of the things you like to do. Right. Um, well, I'll be with my grandbaby this That's <laughs> very, very good. All and right. your grandbaby. Well, thank you for bringing us up to speed on all the issues happening in our city. That'll do thank it for you. this edition of our PV City Talk with Mayor Susan Brooks. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time. Thank you.